All right, let's try this again. How's it going there, chat room? So good to see you. Look at that sentiment. 99.8%. Oh, my gosh. Happy Friday, indeed. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today is October 4th. Welcome back to the live stream. Friday, October 4th. We're going to have a great day today. We're going to be writing some code today. I've got my C Sharp Everywhere hat on. Check it out. C Sharp in the cloud. Visual Studio. Even with a little bit of markup and a mobile device. Absolutely. So good to see everybody here. My gosh, look at the chat room. I've already had a couple of false starts this morning. I need a little bit more caffeine. Pardon me. Yeah. We're going through just a... A, a very quick day today. Oh my goodness. Um, I was on the wrong profile. I actually started broadcasting to Dev Intersection. I was still wired up to Dev Intersection. Um, good morning, Sean. Hugo's here. Yeah, I've got 20 plus accounts that I manage here on Twitch. Just a few. A few. My mic's hot? Not anymore. Now it is. It was, but now it isn't. And we did a thing. Um, it is a two coffee day, but it might actually be G Fuel there. Is that... Is that K's Kuchen Dev. Is that cheese cooking dev in German? Welcome. So good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's see. Good morning from Rainy Bellevue with Donuts. How's it going there, DD Walsh? So good to see you, my friend. Uh, Fan Ray Media. Yes, we've got donut emotes right on Windows. Hit the Windows key, period, and you can bring open the emote dialog there on Windows 10. Choose your favorite emote and Fire away their donuts, tacos, all the things. They go flying by the screen if you're a subscriber. It's amazing. Can we fax a donut to Hugo? I don't I don't think it works that way. It's been a while since I've faxed, but I don't think fax will send donuts. Now that looks like my normal viewer account. Absolutely, right? Because I was broadcasting on the wrong on the wrong never mind. Um, legendary Moo, thank you so much. Ancient Coder, happy Friday to you, my friend. It's great to see you. Rambling Geek is here. Uh, let's see. Uh, job in PA. Good morning in Costa Rica. Have a pretty good Costa Rica coffee. Absolutely. Some amazing coffee in Costa Rica. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you joining us. Source Scoot is here. Keep an eye on your mail. The next week or two and you've got a jersey coming to you my friend tim blazer is here there go the tacos um svava is here okay my gosh svava keep an eye on your mail there's a little something something in there for you tim you've got something coming it's over the weekend or monday i think they said that'll be arriving for you good to see you um swank hat you like that that matches the channel theme colors look at this eh, it's about the same I'm going to need to change up the purple here so it matches the the new Twitch purple, I think. We're going to have to do that. Hugo asks, how's my back doing? It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, so for those of you that don't know, yesterday I was in a, in a minor car accident. Um, and uh, I've got a little... What's that? I don't know what that is. Who cares? Um, I, I was in a minor car accident while I was returning from the post office, shipping out swag to all of you fine folks. Um, I sent out stickers. I sent out our code party hat for hitting the 8,000 follower goal. I sent out 25 jerseys to places like Australia, Toronto, the Netherlands, all over the United States, Texas, uh, uh, Seattle, Alaska, uh, Miami, all over the place, Alabama, all kinds of great places that I am thrilled to know that we have live coders broadcasting from. And as I was leaving, I was parked at a red light, waiting for the light to turn, and boop, guy behind me tapped me in the back, put a nice size dent in the back of my car. Um, I went and got checked out just to make sure. My back was already a little tight from the week of being at two conferences back to back and backpacking my, my, uh, uh, my travel rig, my travel broadcast rig through. Tim underscore Blazer just subscribed. Well, thank you, Tim. I appreciate the sub. So my back was already a little tight. And 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 having that, um, it was very slow. It was very light impact. Um, certainly not at, at speed. And uh, just wanted to make sure things were checked out. And, and it sounds like things are going well. So, Tim, thanks for continuing that gift sub you got from MBB. Really appreciate you doing that. And we'll make another donation this month, this quarter, to, and I need to put the panel on the wall, to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. 
all of our cheers, all of our bits, all of our subs, we're going to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Um, happiness drops a bit when you get up high. When you get to those higher chat numbers, higher sentiment numbers, the, the happiness drops quick. It's easier to drop when it's high. So, um, refactoring Friday where, where, uh, you are vice is that nice mischief is in the mail. All kinds of great mischief. So, um, friends, um, D uh, DD went to the men's room instead of the women's accidentally kind of the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, cheesecake in, in German. Okay. All right. You got me there. That's pretty good. Use the Wonka vision. Hmm. Not a bad idea. So, um, yeah, I wanted to make sure that our friend Svava, you see her here where I'm looking, there's Svava. Um, we'll see if it's pricey, whatever it is. The, the car will be repaired and everything will be fine. It's my, my health is the important thing. The car is material and we can always get those repaired, replaced, whatever. So, um, I want you to know chat room and, and clip this if we want to share this with the other live coders. Look. I put together a pretty neat little swag bag for, for our live coder friends and, and, um, our friends Fava here and fairy wings, they helped pick out some of the cool things that were in there. Um, it was their idea to put together a bag to, to hand out to the live coders. We had a budget and, and it was a, a great idea from them to, to put together a bag, but then to go one step further and put together a little Bluetooth keyboard that we gave out. And we gave it to to 30 different folks in the Live Coders team, a couple of VIPs as well that were at TwitchCon with us. Um, so I, I sent out a little thank you to to our friend Svava there. Fairy Wings got hers while, while we were there. But I wanted to make sure to say thank you there. Lucky number Slevin is here. It is it is a pretty awesome keyboard. It's taller than, than, than other little Bluetooth keyboards. It's great for a phone. What I like about it is I can put my phone on it in portrait, right? Other Bluetooth keyboards, you can only do it landscape. And I have a battery strapped to the back of my phone. So it'll fall off the back, right? But when you have, when you can do it portrait, it's really, really nice like that. And it works great with a tablet too. So very cool with that. And I, I yeah, I wanted to send out a little thank you. Um, and all of our live coder friends are getting the live coder buttons. They're going to a handful of them each so they can share them with their friends. So that everybody knows just how cool um, the live coders are. So, um, Michael Jolly is here. Good to see you. And I am not myself. Uh, thought you'd say hi on your way before heading out to Raleigh. Oh, you're going to miss getting your jersey. The jersey's on its way to your to your home, my friend. So, um, yeah, very cool stuff there. Thank you, Tim Blazer. Really great stream. Very educating. I'm glad you enjoy it. Thank you. Um, Michael Jolly says he foresees the kids stealing all the buttons. So now I've, I've set the bar pretty high with TwitchCon 2019. We're going to have to do something cool for our European friends when we do TwitchCon 2020 and, uh, and TwitchCon San Diego 2020. My eyes are also horizontal and not vertical. You're not wrong. The three-year-old stole the Azure hat. Oh no. Oh no. That's terrible. So, um... So that's what's happened with me. There's there's a little update on my health. We sent out all the things, all the stuff to folks. Um, we sent out sticker packs to a bunch of folks. We sent out the hat to... Um, uh, who was it? One? I forget their name. I know what their real name was. Knit One Play 2. Yes. We sent that out. That was tremendous. I, I always enjoy sending, sending goodies, sending swag out to folks. And I got approved. I got approved to to uh, do something special for our folks that have a one-year sub. And I'm going to have to draw a line here and say the folks that have, and, and going forward, we'll do it for everybody who gets a one-year sub because I missed my one-year anniversary. Um, but I'm going to be doing something for folks with a one-year sub. Um, when they hit a one-year sub, I don't know about two years. Two years is a whole other thing that I, I haven't even thought about yet. But two-year subs will, the earliest they could possibly happen is... February, I think it's your January or February. So we got a little bit until then. Um, we hit our 8,000 follower goal. So we need a new follower goal. Chat room, I need your help. Two years surface Neo. No, no, bad idea. 
bad idea. Not going there. No. Um, free copy of Visual Studio Community Edition. You know what, Hugo? Let's do that right now. If you're in the chat room, you can get a free copy of Visual Studio Community Ed Well, everybody can get a free copy of Visual Studio Community Edition. That's not really a thing, is it? That's that. That's not really a a a, a, a great thing to give out to th to folks. Um, what can we do? You have to ask me nicely. Yeah, it is free. Boom, boom. You're right. Okay, let's figure something else out. Um, but two years is. I've got three, four months to that. Um, but what I want to do, I want to talk about what are we going to do when we hit ten thousand followers. So. I, I've I've kicked around a couple of ideas. Ten thousand followers, according to Social Blade, we should be hitting in January, February. Rainbow hair and rainbow beard. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I'm not opposed to that one. Um can you can you do me a favor and keep it uh english here please alligator blood hello hello what's my development machine specs there you go it's a precision tower 3620 it's also got 32 gig of ram on it and it's an i7 um i i need to keep this english donnie and uh, i really don't want to turn on Thank you for the follows. I don't want to turn on the English only. Only. Thank you, engine coder. Thank, thank you to all of our new followers. Um, I very much appreciate that. Yeah. Um, thank you for the for the timeouts there. I appreciate handling that a little bit. I appreciate the new follows. Kyle Spartan, Scarecrow too, and Fall In. Appreciate you joining us. It's yeah. Here comes the troll. Okay. You've had your fun. Michael Jolly says, at 10,000 followers, come to the dark side, become a bald, bearded builder. Mm, I don't know about that. Shaving the head? No. Shaving the beard? Eh. Shaving head in the shape of C sharp? No. No. That's a little bit much. Um, do we have a follow bot attacking? Tattoo. Now... I had discussed doing a glitch tattoo at Partner. Yes, cool things for, for one-year subscribers. Let's get people on their way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's a thing there. I don't know about tattoo. Oh, my gosh. Michael Jolly. The Michael Jolly just gifted five subs. Thank you so much for that. Estranged HD, Shy Sharp, Portal 7, Major Advil... And who's the fifth? Don't see one, two, three, four. Wine ball. Congratulations. You all just got subscriptions to the channel. Thank you so much, Michael Jolly, for generously donating those. And we'll make donations to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um and then they're gonna cure cancer. Is is that that's a start. Um, let me get some music playing here in the background and, and I want to talk a little bit more about what I, I don't know what the 10,000 follower is going to be. And in February, uh, we have a stream anniversary. stream anniversary. Yeah, that's coming up, uh, coming up in November. And here's the thing. I'll be at dev intersection when the stream anniversary happens. So we might do a Las Vegas special stream anniversary show. That would be cool. That'd be really cool. Let me play. This is purple. It's a little bit slow starting up. Give it a second. There it goes. This is Music to Code by. Thank you so much, Hugo, for dropping that in the chat room. Very much appreciate the follow, Cloud Gator. Um, this is Music to Purple Rain. Well, purple like my hat. 
Um, this is music that's designed to get you in the flow, get you focused on whatever your task is that you might be working on. Whether it's writing code, reading documentation, doing homework, chores around the house. Check it out, mtcb.pwop.com. Thank you so much, Mr. Carl Franklin. You saw him yesterday with me on the Dev Intersection channel. We were talking about Blazor and practical Blazor applications yesterday. He's the author of this music and does a tremendous job. Let's support him. Thanks so much. Are we allowed to stream from Vegas? Can you only watch if you're in Vegas? No. We can stream from Vegas. We've streamed We've streamed from the executive boardroom of the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Ha <laughs> ha! How's that? It was amazing. Paul Paws 101 says, love the pwop. Yeah, that's that's Carl's studio. Pwop Studios. Tremendous. But thank you for the follow, Cloud Gator and MGT, M, MJT AU. Yeah, I think we're going to need to do a Vegas special for the stream anniversary For the two-year stream anniversary um, I think... Hang on, let's do this. Let's get over to the to to my machine here and let's talk about this. There's our source code. But let's talk about I will be at and I need to put the dev intersection banner. My banners are out of date underneath of me again. I need to get them up to date. Let's talk about Dev Intersection is November 18th to the 21st. And my stream anniversary. I forget what day I started streaming. Um, it was, it was that, you know what? It might be just after I get back from there. It might be just ever after. I know how to tell. I know how to tell. YouTube.com, C Sharp Fritz videos. Oh my. Yeah, let's take a look. Cloud Gator says, caught part of my .NET coverage by accident. Glad I somehow stumbled on the channel again. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Cloud Gator. I very much appreciate those kind words. Um, yeah, we like to have a little bit of fun here and talking about tech and teaching about all kinds of fun things. D on the stream anniversary, dump a cooler of G Fuel on Jeff likes, <laughs> like players do. That could be a thing. So this is my first episode I ever did. Really, I'm looking at a U.S. Army commercial. Really? I don't want to look at that. No, skip the truck. Look at that, I'm, I've got hair. Michael Jolly gifting a the sub. Michael Jolly gifted Cloud Gator a subscription. The Michael Jolly gifted a tier one sub to Cloud Gator. Thank they you so much for that. 192 gift subs in the channel. Holy crow, 192! Michael Jolly! Thank you so much for that. Um... Here we go. November 22nd is my is my stream anniversary. November 22nd, which is right after the end of Dev Intersection. Uh, right, Spartan? It does. It feels very Oprah. We've got Oprah Jolly here. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Uh, those were a different set of videos, yes. But now we've, we're full on into the hats. Yes. So, right, Lycan? Very well. So... The 22nd is after the end of Dev Intersection. So we're going to have to look at doing a stream anniversary stream. That's a Friday. Friday the 22nd. I'll be flying home then. Oh my gosh, Michael! The Michael Jolly gifted Spartan Tiara subscription. The Michael Jolly gifted a tier one sub to Spartan Tiara. They have given 193 gift subs in the channel. Thank you so much. And we'll make donations to St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Thank you very, very much. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, I'm. you know what? Maybe we do it that Sunday, the 24th. We do a stream anniversary stream. Because, okay, so it won't be in Las Vegas that we'll do it. Okay, we're good on that. Um, but I need to figure out what to do for 10,000. I don't know what to do when we hit 10,000 followers. I got to figure that out. I'm going to think about it a little bit more and get back to you on that. I've, I've got some ideas. The rainbow hair is, I don't know about rainbow hair. One to two weeks to figure it out. You got a little bit more than that. I do have, um, folks that I do need to invite in who have won the, the, 
the Bits for Bites each month I need to invite to join us. Clinton Rocksmith, Robert Tables. Um, I have them written down. I need to go back and, and hit that. Thank you so much. Um, he'll hit 200? I, I don't know about that. Um, so, let's talk about this. Um, I started going through and hooking up everything so that we can build here in Linux. So this is Ubuntuber, and our friend Tim Bodet is also doing Ubuntuber and coding all month long um, in Linux, right? Let's spend some time checking out and, and get out of our comfort zone, do new things. And we're over here using Linux inside of a virtual machine on my Windows machine. And uh, no, they haven't done their collabs yet. We need to. I need to schedule these, and I've got plenty of time here in October to do that. We need to make that happen. Um, same thing with yeah, Michael Jolly, Robert Tables, Carrie, Clinton Rocksmith. We, we've got to make these things happen. I am gonna. I'm gonna start sending emails today. I am. I am doing that. Where, where's the thing? I am. That's a bad idea. There was my public key. It was a public key. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, so it was uh, Robert Tables, right? Michael Jolly, Clinton Rocksmith, and the Carrie Payette um, about the co-streams. Because Carrie has a pretty cool idea for a co-stream. Robert Tables, we were talking about doing something really cool with... Uh, with containers. So, yeah, I've got to do this. Brave Cobra is here. Hello, hello. Going to set up something on change.org. Mary Jo Stabler, good morning. It is uncomfortable indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Brave Cobra Brave with Cobra the sub. Who just resubscribed for 11 months, nearly a year. Time flies. The time does fly. It does. It would be amazing. All right. Um, so I've started... I had this logged in with a password, but I used two-factor authentication on GitHub. So I would have to get the two-factor authentication password, which is kind of wonky to drop in there and have to key it in each time. So I'm trying to flip it back over to my uh, SSH account. So I copied out... I just set up and copied out my SSH key here. And I want to change this over so that I'm using... Uh, that location to do my um, as a remote destination using git right so when you when you're using git when you're using source control right you have a remote server that you're interacting with oh my goodness Theus kittens just resubscribed for 11 months good morning dude good morning to you wow it's fierce kittens thank you so much um, you've said containers three times fast. Robert Tables is going to appear. Dr. Scott! No, not him. Um, thank you so much, Fierce Kittens, for that very generous, uh, uh, subscription. We'll make a donation to St. Jude. And, um, friends, do me a favor. Can we get a shout-out for Fierce Kittens? She's gonna start, in the next week or so, a series for folks that are just getting started, brand new to development, Code Newbies. I'm Scott, I'm new here. <laughs> Job in PA, thanks so much for that sub. Um, she's going to start a series to teach brand new developers how to get started with WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation, be able to build Windows applications quick and easy with free tools that are available to folks that have Windows installed. .NET Framework, um, WPF and build simple applications. Be on your way to building the next really cool Windows application. Love the sentiment at 99.4. Everybody's happy. It's going to be tremendous. Um, so do me a favor. Drop Fierce Kittens a follow. Let her know that you're interested. It, it, if that's something that, that you would be interested in. She normally streams in the evenings here in, in the States. Um, but it looks like there's going to be a great series coming out of this, and I, I'm very excited to hear that. And I, I want to make sure that, that we support our friend here. Can't wait to do this. Already started slides for the first session. Oh, my goodness. Michael Jolly, don't go there. Michael Jolly is already saying JavaScript. 
Don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to get your hand slapped. You know this. Okay. Um. Yeah, look at that. Barfing rainbows. All right, all right. So when you're doing source control with Git, of course, you have Git remotes. And when I look at my remotes, these are actually both pointing to the HTTPS, which means you have to log in with them. So I want to update my Git remote and I want to change it. I want to set the URL. Um, I don't want to, right? Uh, I need to remove it and then re-add it. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, Git remote, um, I do want to, I want to do a remove origin, Git remote add origin. And we'll paste that back in. Okay. Let me see here. And if I get pull, are we okay there? Uh, let's do uh, git pull origin dev dash u. No, I didn't do JavaScript. There was no JavaScript there. Git pull origin dev. Already up to date. Fantastic. Um, so what I should be able to do, right? Yeah. Um, huh? Wait a sec. Upgraded it to ASP. Okay, so I should be able to push that now to origin. Git push origin dev. And the dash u says track this. That's my upstream that I'm going to push to by default. There we go. See that there? Branch dev set up to track remote branch dev from origin. Is that a little small? I think that's a little bit small. There we go. I think is that font size a little bit better for your chat room? Let me see here. What do we got? Uh, quick question about Blazor from Z Lucent. I was trying to use input select to bind an integer value and found I could not. Do you know if there are plans to implement that support? Um, let's take a look. Uh, you know what? Searching on the Docs website, not that great. Uh, search docsmicrosoft.com blazer input select we'll talk about blazer here in just a second um, <laughs> barfing rainbow seems like the perfect metaphor for javascript you know what you're not wrong you're not wrong typescript would be better yes power glove the blazer maybe vb script making a comeback no no not going there Mobile finally got a design update, and it's really, really nice. What mobile? Mobile what? Get rid of the most popular language in the world that millions of developers learn to program because reasons. Uh, which one? I don't blame you. Mobile Twitch did. Oh, good. Yes. Yes, it did. All right. There are... Here we go. Um, input number, I think, is what you're looking for. Um, Z Lucent. Input select gives you a select. It gives you a combo box. Oh, but you want to bind it to an integer value. That should work. That should work. Hmm. That's interesting. I haven't worked with that. Right, you want to drop down. I see. Um, that's interesting. I'd be tempted to open an issue and ask for that. Yeah, input number gives you a number, a text box that you can key in a number to. But if you want a drop down that you want to bind to a number, that looks weird. You used to run vbhelp.net when you were in college, Fierce Kittens? Oh my gosh. That's kind of crazy. Published in Rock's books. Okay. Um, much respect. Wow. I, I was published. I was published in A Press. It was a crummy book on ASP.NET Core. All right. Let's let's get into this. So I think I've got things turned around now, and we can start. We can start building again. Um, we've updated all of our tools, so we're using now ASP.NET Core three. Um, I'm using C Sharp 7.3. I don't want to update to 8 just yet, only because there's features in there that I'm not quite familiar with. I, I need to spend some more time learning them. 
before I'm, I want to start rolling it out to my projects. Um, I've brought over my user secret, so I should be able to log in now. In fact, let's, let's test that because I did bring in the user secrets. Um, so I'm going to do, let me get down into the orchestrator project and let's .NET run here. You ended up using select options instead. That works. How did I solve the download problem? Asks Boom Boom. Turned out it was a uh, networking issue. Um, a misconfiguration between the VPN that I was using. Um, well, that, that feels... That makes me sad. What did I break? Startup 54, authentication options does not contain a net definition for options and no accessible extension method options, excepting a first argument of type authentication options could be found. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> this did work. But now I've broken it. This did work. Why do I have a one over here? One problem in that file. Only one? Um, all right, let's take a look. Startup down here. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. That, that was bad. That was... That was terrible. I, I feel... I feel a little Shame. bit of... Shame. Shame. Yeah. Thank you for the follow. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but welcome. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, a little bit of shame there. There we go. Now we got it running. All right. I still didn't install the certer security certificate. I should probably do that. Let's see what we got here. Welcome to the Pixelbot. Login. Now, this should have routed me over to Auth0, but it didn't. Why not? Because we were logging in with Auth0, and I had an Auth0 configuration there. 2 a.m. in the UK. Woo! Yes, that is Coder... Uh, no, not Coding Dojo. Coder Dojo is who I'm donating to. Yes. Um, and we'll be... We're actually going to have a donation stream coming up here very, very soon. Um, let me look here. We've got some errors. Right. Unhandled exception was thrown in the application. Unable to obtain configuration from Auth0 domain. Okay. The address specified is not valid as per HTTPS scheme. Right. It didn't grab my domain and drop it in here. All right, here's what I need to do. I need to take a look at my secrets file and make sure that it's properly loading my secrets. So, um, chat room, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to come over to this view while I'm <clears throat> while I'm looking at my secrets file. You know what I mean? Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Pardon me. Nope, that wasn't the right file. It should have loaded this. Um, that looks okay. Let me scroll up here and look at when it loaded configuration. Make sure everything loaded right. Because it should have added the my user secrets file that had everything. And I'm sorry, I'm not showing you the screen because... Um, I'm not going to dox myself. Mm. Make sure I'm using dollar on the string as well. No, it was working just fine in um, on Windows. Right? Scrolling, scrolling. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to clear that. 
Uh, where was it? Uh, thank you so much for the follow. Oh no, a duck! Welcome. And Oga Oga Soga. Where? Oh my gosh. Um, we, we're closing in on another sticker giveaway. Every 100 followers, we're going to give away another pack of stickers. Thank you so much for your support. Really appreciate that. Let's go back over to the code here. Um, there we go. I wanted to be zoomed in just another click there. Um, hmm. So there's a thing down here we added when we when we had Bobby Johnson on. That's not myself. Uh, I am not myself. We had where is it? I'm looking for where we added auth zero. There it is. Let me add some value. <laughs> Thank you, Nothing Else Matters. I appreciate the cheer. Um, yeah, it should have added Auth0 domain clan ID. We should have gotten those values. I'm going to drop it, that cheer in right here. Developer, developer. Dr. Scott! Developer, developer, developer. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, Abdel, thank you. Yeah, I don't have my cheer snippet over here. Um, so it was cheer 100 from nothing else matters. And today is uh, the 4th of October, 2019. There we go. Um, config auth0 domain. It should have grabbed it there. Hmm... Thank you for the follow. Mr. Buggy, appreciate that. My lord, we're going to break right through the, some of these follower accounts here quick. Thank, I very much appreciate. And and just a, a quick question. Are people joining because they saw the Wired article? Let me know. Um, I very much appreciate the the joins here. Um, it should have added the, the user secrets. So, user secrets are a configuration option that's available to us in um, in ASP.NET Core where it's going to load from a, a hidden file off to the side if there are secrets. Um, a, a secrets file, right? It's just a JSON file that contains configuration information that you don't want to check in to source control. You want to keep these things secret off to the side. You don't want to share passwords and ID tokens. Super secret secrets, absolutely. I see. I, it should pick up the secrets, right? Lucky number eleven. It's it's not VS Code. It's um. It's a uh, it's ASP.NET Core that should be picking up those values, and loading them. Abdel joined because you like .NET development and want to master it in the future. Well, thank you. And you learned about this channel listening to .NET Rocks. Well, thank you, Job NPA. Appreciate that. I, I'm glad you uh, enjoy the channel. And um, it's it's quite simple, really. We it, everybody who tunes in, they stick around because Everything is awesome. it's pretty cool. We have a lot of fun here. All right. Git is a pretty good tool for finding GitHub secrets. Shh, Git is a pretty good tool for finding GitHub secrets as they're committed. Oh, that's a problem. That's that's a real problem. You, you don't do that. What's that? Don't store your secrets in Git. What's that? People can find it. What's that? And then your password's out there in the open. What's that? And now you've got a real problem. What's that? You're going to need to reset everything, okay? You got it already? And then? And then? No. Did I add secret sauce or was it another flavor? No. No secret sauce. It was all the same flavor. It's all been 100% me. Okay? So, um... I, I've got I've got too many sound effects. All right, so where where did our secrets go here? Houston, we have a problem. I gotta find out if it's loading these things properly. So what do I do? Um, I think so. The auth zero domain. I think we're okay to to like log that. You know what I'm saying? It. Um, I think if I grab this and just log it to the console, 
Well, that's in my secrets file. Okay. Um, so if I log that information, I'll know whether or not it found it without having to log some of these other things. Like uh, client ID is not too bad to log. Um, right. I mean, I, I guess I could log this whole logout URI. Um, but yeah, how are we going to, how are we going to, where are we going to find this chat room? It's here somewhere. I know it. I can feel it. There's a thing. Let's do this. Let's do this. Here we go. Let's, um, let's take in an iLogger factory. Factory! No. Um, that's a thing. Let's see. Control dot. Hey, look at that. Visual Studio Code is so much nicer when the C-sharp extension is actually working. You know what I'm saying? Um, var logger equals logger factory. Uh, create logger. We need to give it a name. Um, let's call it startup. Hey, Scott! No, no, we're not. And he, no. We're going to log this as a de debug inf piece of information. And then. Uh, no, and then. You're drinking Faceberry Midnight Tangent Blue. Nice. Ecomath asks, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Well, first off, which G Fuel flavor am I sipping today? All right, I will say I am drinking Snow Cone today, okay? Faceberry is my favorite flavor, Midnight Tangent, Ryan, okay? The question, hang on. Can I back up here a second? Friends, I'm sorry, this is important. Back up. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I'm I'm a full-on geek for G Fuel. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just a big fan. They gave out cups to everybody who went to TwitchCon. And it gets me going. I really enjoy it. Thank you for the G, G Fuel. Blazerberry. No. There is no Blazerberry. We could do something. Abdel asks, do I prefer development on Linux or Windows? I like Windows just because I'm a longer-term Windows person, but I want to get outside my comfort zone and try Linux, and maybe I'll like it. Maybe we'll stick around here a little bit. I don't know. But for the entire month of Ubuntober, we're going to do that. So the G Fuel question is, did Fritz convince G Fuel to sponsor me at TwitchCon? It asks Ecomath. I can tell you that there are conversations now. There are conversations. And we'll see what happens. I can tell you that um, there are a number of organizations that are interesting and interested oh in sponsoring my. the stream. And I want to make sure that any sponsorship that joins us um, helps support some of our uh, some of our uh, uh, charity goals that we have here um, help support the growth of the stream and doesn't sponsor in any way that is ostentatious or or becomes overly advertised. I don't want to turn this to turn into like a NASCAR or an F F1 racing thing where there's just badges all over the place from all these companies. I want to make sure that it's it's something that's poignant, something that you as developers would appreciate. And uh, Frank, oh my gosh, thank you for the raid. It, to finish that thought, I don't want to make sure that it's it's not something oppressing you and makes you feel like you're watching a commercial all the time. Okay? So, um, th ra gosh, Frank, thank you so much for that raid. I very much appreciate that. Um, welcome, raiders. Seven raiders have joined us. My name is Jeff Fritz. Uh, maybe you've seen my stream before. Um, we write code here typically in C-sharp, typically with Visual Studio Code, but this is not the typical stream. This is Ubuntuber, and we're over here in Linux with Visual Studio Code, writing code. Maybe we'll do a little Vim at some point, do Vim with, um, with uh, uh, what's it called down here? The OmniSharp plugin on Vim, because I like VI. Um, the .NET is out of date. What .NET is out of date? You feel like you're in a Microsoft advertising hell loop, says Fierce Kittens. I'm not advertising. I'm showing how to use the things. 
Spend 10 minutes finding a sound effect button. I am. I'm going to find the right sound effect button. Let me tell you something here, Fierce Kittens. I'm going to find it right over here. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? Do you? Do you really think you have a chance? Are these really the questions that I was called here to answer? Are they really? Ms. Kittens? If that's even your real name, Kittens. You have no idea what you're dealing with. No, not at all. Okay. Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Because... Danger's my middle name. It is. It's my middle name. Don't mess with that. Alright? You're amazing. You figured this all out already. That's right. Kind of just here for the Fierce Kitten C-Sharp Fritz antagonism. Hey, wait do you see it on her stream when she starts with the WPF. <laughs> oh, wait do you see what we're going to drop there. It's going to be tremendous. Winter is coming. That's That hat's over over there. We'll wear that hat later. Ed Sherbino was just here to watch me watch drink. Oh, Ed. Well, welcome, Raiders. It's, Greetings, my excellent friend. It's so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. And, and gosh, Frank, what were you doing over there on your stream? Let us know so that Fierce Kittens can antagonize you instead. Every time I drink G Fuel, an associate engineer gets their wings. That's a different energy drink. Different drink, not this one, okay? Woo! Sand Keys, thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. All right, I want to log information here about that auth zero domain let's let's go over let's get that information it's this chalupa right here i'm going to log that information so we can figure out if in fact i've got a configuration issue issue if it's properly loading my configuration from those user secrets now user secrets just so you know because i did have to i had to look this up myself so user secrets um, are a way, like I said, for you to store data somewhere else. And when you start using the user secrets tools, you can use them at the command line. I'll show you how to hit the user secrets at the command line in a second here. You have this user secrets ID that it drops in as a property in your project. This doesn't actually go anywhere. It's a property that you can use with a little bit of reflections, look at the project and get this property out of it. But the user secrets tools use this to go find a file on disk and that file that it creates that's outside of your project see i'm in i'm in c dev listen to me c dev i'm in my home folder dev well tony pixelbot pixelbot orchestrator it actually puts it in um a dot microsoft folder off of your home folder in a place called user secrets and there is the same GUID that's right there. Let me make sure it matches. 1A dog 99 fox 2 fox 97 221143 alpha charlie baker echo 53530 baker 52884 echo 7 alpha. Yeah, we look good there. Okay. And when you look in that folder, there's our secrets JSON. And it's a JSON file that contains the secrets. It looks exactly the same as our settings file over here that contains information about the things. Now, I put this in here so that it was a template, so that it was it looks like what's in my user secrets file. And the fact that my log file showed that it was pushing this same information tells me that it didn't load my user secrets properly. What project are we are we working? We're working on the on the. Uh, thank you, Hugo. I appreciate it. setting up the project command. I know my NATO phonetic alphabet. Thank you, you are vice. I tried hard to memorize it, but when we get in. There's some of the ones after the hexadecimal, right? Um, it's either Alpha Baker or Baker or Bravo. I like Baker. Alpha Baker Charlie, uh, Delta Echo Foxtrot. I, I start to get a little off, right? Gamma Hilt. Uh, Hotel, I forget I. It's I's not indigo. But B is Bravo. Okay, golf. That's what go Yeah, G is golf. See, I get confused. India. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. So, and it varies from country to country. Eh, it shouldn't. So, in .NET Core, of course, Frank, and we're using some AI to simplify the command player uses. Nice. 
Text-based adventure game. Very cool. Gamma does sound cooler. Lima. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Kilo Lima. Juliet. That's what it is for Jay. See, I get, I get all confused. I don't use it enough. Um, but the hexadecimal ones I use all the time. Okay. So I don't think it's loading properly because I don't see these values loading properly. Um, so let's just log out the value and it should pull that value from my user secrets file. So I'm just going to log debug that, right? Let's actually prefix that. Um, our auth zero domain is, right? Because it needs to load that properly in order for us to actually, you know, do the thing. Um, so I need to go back to this folder. You make me sad. What's the hotkey to copy? Control shift C. And then I can do control shift V. Uh, no, I need to CD that. There we go. Um, all right, so let's .NET run. .NET run will build first. And then run the application. And we'll take a look. Those keys are case sensitive. Yes, but you need the control shift in there. Because Atlanta is the Delta Airline, Airlines headquarter, they use Dixie instead of Delta. <laughs> oh, that's neat. Thank you, Frackberg. That's pretty cool. I would have never known that. Thank you for sharing that. We like it to do things. We, we like it to do lots of things, Mary Jo. Oh, no! What happened? <coughs> Configure services method must be parameterless or only or take only one parameter of type I service collection. You make me sad. Fine. Be that way. I know when you don't like me. I'm going to go down here then. Alright, go down here and put that there. So now I've got my logger factory down here and we'll do it at the beginning of my configure method when I do have configuration. I do have configuration. I do, I do, I do. Alright, copy this. Now I could just move it down with the all up and down buttons. Oh my. Right? Um... What was the command? There's a feature inside of VS Code to show the hotkeys. No. Right, it, it's... There was something. Do you remember what this is? Um, right, there's a thing that'll that'll show the hotkeys when you, as you use them. Presentation mode. Is that it? Well, I don't see it. No. Yeah, Karnik doesn't want work on Linux. Um, I want to turn that on for a second. One Visual Studio Code Show Hotkeys. I forget what it was called. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. And was it presentation mode? Oh, it is an extension. Look at that. To show your code properly in a presentation. Uh, no. No, that's not it. Right, it was like a... It was a like a code overlay. Is it on the help menu? Keyboard shortcuts reference. Um... I don't think that's it. No. Um, <laughs> thank you for the follow. Extension viewlet? Yeah. Keyboard. Thank you for the follows. Extra chunky and Martin after dark. Thank you. Screen key for Linux. Eh. C-sharp configuration. Yeah, now I'm getting down into all the different things down here. No, I don't want to get into the extensions. No. We'll find it later. If anybody... Screencast mode. Was that it? Toggle screencast mode. Hey, there we go. 
Thank you. That was it. Screencast mode indeed. Thank you. Now we'll be able to see some of the funny things that I do with the keys. So this should tell me what the Auth0 domain is now when I launch the application. So let me go back over here. .NET run. And hopefully we get we get it working, right? Throw me a freaking bone here. Right? Come on, Dr. Evil. I see some debugs. Hosting environment production. Hosting environment production. Well, there we go. It doesn't load user secrets if we're in production mode. We need to be in development mode. So we got to change that up. And I didn't even, I don't even see my logger outputting here. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, chat room. Developers, 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 developers. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Granny. Appreciate you joining us. Minus one for discoverability. You're not wrong. You're not. So we need to change this to development mode. So there is a setting for that. And it's called ASP.NET Core um, Environment, right? And we're going to set that to development. I think that's what it is. What do you mean it's not a valid identifier? What? Um, <laughs> do we have to make it an underscore? Is that what it is? Thank you for the follow. It's it's Batman. Welcome. Did I do that right? I don't think I did that right. ASP.NET Core environment. Yeah, it's not set. So now if I .NET run, it should tell me that we're in the development mode, which means it will actually load the thing. Load the thing. There we go. See that? Hosting environment development, which means it will load. There we go. Our Auth0 domain is there. Ah, now it should work. All right. Um, close that. I'm going to click the thing. Just click the thing and have it navigate. I like that in the Linux terminals. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Pixelbot, log in with Twitch, doing the thing. I gotta remember my password. I think that's my password. Nope, that's not my password. And I saved the wrong password. Jeff, you, what, what are you thinking? Do it live. Oh my. Uh, right? What's my password on Twitch? Can somebody tell me what my password is? I think it's Hunter Two. I think that's my password on Twitch. And here's the thing. When I look up passwords... Oh, I did it wrong. That's my password. Yes, update. Here comes my token. It's this. Yes, remember this computer for the next month. I don't want to have to keep keying that in. It's Hunter03! You're right. Welcome for the uh, welcome, Bitwise Operator. I appreciate you joining me. Yes, let's ship it. We've got it. There we go. All right, I'm feeling good about this. And it's Friday. Fridays, I like to raid one of our um, one of our creative friends. There we go. Hey, current channels. Join the C Sharp Fritz channel. Okay, so. Nerd Force TV. Thank you for the follow. Look, it even says it right there. It's updating properly. It's doing the things properly for us. I feel so good about that. So for those of you who might not have been following, who might be new here, this is a bot that we've been writing, and it's not like a normal chat bot. This is a bot that we've been writing that actually um, stands up and listens in multiple chat rooms. We'll need to track previous join channels in here to quickly rejoin or auto-join. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea either. So, um, Carrie Payette is here. Oh my gosh, Carrie, it's so good to see you. Without you here, I feel like... 
Mr. Blue Tarski. I do. I feel like Mr. Blue Tarski. Zero point zero. I'm a little bit better than that. Little? Thanks so much. Does my sentiment indicator properly detect sarcasm? No. No, you're right, Mr. Maru. It doesn't. Well played. You're correct. It does detect tacos. Because everybody loves tacos. So, hey, s &B, Good to see you. Um, okay. So, right? See that? Tacos. Let me add some value. <laughs> Thanks. Smile. Thanks so much, Carrie. Appreciate that. So, all right. We've got things fixed. We realized we've got it running now. We know. We understand that uh, we weren't... We are running in production mode here. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. Thank you so much for the follow. Mad Hatter. Appreciate that. Um, the world doesn't properly detect sarcasm. No, it doesn't. We are cruising on this follower goal. My gosh. We've still got almost an hour left together here. We might get to another giveaway today. If we turn that over to 8100, I'll give away another pack of stickers today. They're tremendous. Everybody loves the stickers. Um, uh, no, we won't give away the Code Party hat. No, no, we do have to give away another Code Party hat. We have autographed Code Party hats. You could get a hat with the D.D. Walsh's autograph on it. It's true. Mike1886, thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate you joining us. Um... Okay, so this is working. We're in like Flynn. You know what I should do? I should set up the user activity train. Let's set this up for follows. And we're going to give folks, uh, it, sure, 10 minutes to continue the train. All right, save that. And if we view the user activity widget. So right now, this is a user activity. This is a follower train widget. And what it's going to do. So we've got a follow. So the train length is now one. Okay, we've got 10 minutes to continue the train to get our next follower. Word man, thanks so much for helping out there and with the follow. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So, if we get another follower before this counter goes to zero, it will extend the train. But if it does go to zero, the train will stop. And the next follower we, we get after that will restart the train. So we've got this built. This is all being done with Blazor. This is C Sharp that's running server side, but it's being trafficked back and forth. It's only sending those updates using Signal R, right? And Signal R is this live technology, live connection technology that allows our servers, our web servers, to push data to the connected clients. Shukin asks, what happens if I unfollow and follow again? Most of the things will detect that you've refollowed and, and ignore it. Most of them will. But I appreciate all of the the folks joining us today it's really great to see you thank you so much um mary joe i agree it's it's pretty cool now the idea here right and all this source code is available um if you'd run the project command uh hugo thanks so much for setting that up you'll get information about it but here's the deal this is what we started setting up for our friend imperial so there's configuration we need to build that shows a little bit of a little bit more graphics. I kind of agree with you, Smab. These are my kind of graphics. I'm a developer. I'm not an artist. I'm not a creative. Um, and and the folks that do the art in the in the creative streams are amazing. They're amazing. They're doing some really great stuff over there. Whether it's painting, sewing, clay. Um, our friend Dryad T uh, makes coffee mugs uh, live on stream and and is formulating um, various tea mixes and brews um look at that we went to three how did we get to three that fierce kittens awesome at digital art she's been drawing and drawing she actually okay truth be told fierce kittens drew the end then and the no and then emotes did you know there's a no emote for our channel i bet you didn't know that subs check that out as cold is cold as ice um so this is i call this ubuntober 
this is a, a month that I dedicate to trying out working with Linux. As a .NET developer, I want to get outside of my comfort zone. I want to try new things. So why not try Linux for a month? Right? Let's just learn a little bit together, see if, how it works, and maybe, maybe we'll find something we like. And I also want to make sure that folks that are using Linux see something that they feel comfortable. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the, the kind words, as cold as ice. Yeah, I, right? We've got to try new things every now and again. I'm, I'm actually thinking about, and, and I, don't want to, I don't want to call her out unnecessarily, but I'm thinking about doing a co-stream or two with our friend Ninja Bunny and trying to learn some Python with her. I'm thinking about it. That might be a lot of fun to do that, right? So, um, and she does a really neat thing in her stream where it detects, the bot detects when live coder team members arrive and it, and it sends out an alarm, live coder team member detected and it, and it says something. Really, I love the, the text to speech that she has over there. Mr. Maru asks, what ended up being the network issue I was getting when set up with Ubuntu? You know what, Mr. Maru? It was a, a VPN misconfiguration. I, the VPN was running on my host machine, and it wasn't able to, to properly get out on the corporate network. Yeah, SNB, I do want to do something like that. Yeah. Darth and PC Soul is also learning Python. They're, Python's a pretty neat uh, language. I'm Scott, I'm new here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome to Turkish Developer. I'm glad that you're new here and you joined us with your Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime. Everybody loves Twitch Prime. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you can get Twitch Prime free. Just link it to your Amazon account and you get one subscription you can use anywhere here on Twitch. If you choose to use it here, you'll get 17 emotes. The ability to throw emotes on the screen like this. And I'll make a donation to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital this quarter. Very cool. What design patterns are being used in Blazor? Asks It's Batman. So It's Batman. Good question. Um, I'm using a little MVVM, a little model view, view model, so that I have view models that contain all my logic sitting behind my view, which is a Razor template. A Razor template, quite simply, is some HTML mixed with C Sharp. So by having that view model with all of our business logic in a class somewhere else, I can pass in and work with that and actually unit test it a little bit easier with, uh, with, with the thing. Let me add some value. TBD Gamer! Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for those bits. And I'll make a donation. Yes, you've added some value. Um, at some point, Scott's going to hear that he's always adding value to my channel. And um, that might be a thing. So um, I want to make sure that I recognize those cheers. Thank you so much. Well, maybe it's been suggested that I might be able to have Mr. Guthrie join me for a stream at Dev Intersection. I'm not saying, but I'm just saying. So Carrie cheered 142. Let's make sure I get that in here. Um, today's the fourth. Yeah, we'll do it like that. And uh, we just got... That was 300 from TBD Gamer. Great Scott! Yes, we might have the greatest Scott join us. Not necessarily here, but over on the Dev Intersection channel. And maybe... Maybe I can talk him into writing a little bit of code? What I'd really like to, to do is... Um, it, maybe ask him to do a little code review with us. If not a code review. Uh, writing code. But I don't know. We'll see. Hat and Sandals, good to see you. Good morning! And Protopoly.com, good morning to you. It would be rather epic to bring on the greatest of Scots. Am I hosting my Blazor using WebAssembly or on the server? Asks, is that, uh, make, let me make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Is that Mounced? Let me know. I want to make sure I pronounce your name right. This is on the server, the way that I'm using this. But because I'm building um, with, with Blazor, I can build things as components. You see a components folder here. These components can then be reused and composed together. Oh my gosh, I got the pronunciation right. Well, thank you. I, I thank you for that information. Um, I can compose these back together and put components inside of other things. And even when I get to um, that place, 
when I do decide I want to make some of these run client side, these same components will work with just a little bit of configuration change on the client using WebAssembly. And WebAssembly, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a technology that lets us run native code in our browser. Really neat stuff that's happening with that. I want to make sure that, that folks understand that that's available to work on every browser. Not just Windows, Mac, and Linux, but it also works on your mobile phones because it's a HTML standard. And the dog is really unhappy. Can you hear that? Yeah, you can hear that. I am talking about WebAssembly, but I'm not necessarily using any of it today. It's the same technology that I can use. We, it's the, the ASP.NET team has um, done a really neat trick by making it portable from both server to client. My hope, I don't know if this is a design goal, but I'd love to be able at some point to be able to say very similar to how some of the um, Angular folks do with their Angular Universal uh, configurations. I'd love to be able to say, run the first batch of this on the server so that you get a quick load of, of things in the, in the browser. But after it arrives in the browser and you're still downloading all the DLLs and things to run natively on the client, let them operate server side while we're waiting for all that to download. But once it's downloaded and on the client, hand off control to client side Blazor. I would love to see that happen. A UPS delivery showing up? No. No, I have a feeling that it's, uh, it's the landscapers across the street. All right, I think she's settled down. Can I manage that? I hope so. I hope so. I hope that happens. It's a long ways off. They're still working on the client side Blazor stuff. They're expecting to release that in early 2020. So we're really excited to see that. It's going to be amazing. Right? Do it! I hope they do it. Okay. So... This is that very simple train that I have built. And it, the, the follower train's about to, to run out here. This is going to be a problem. If tradition holds, they'll release a preview right before or during build. Um, maybe. Mm, maybe. Um, truth be told, the .NET team, the Visual Studio team, um, has shown that they're not married to releasing things at Build or Ignite. We released .NET Core 3 at .NET Conf. Visual Studio 2019 was released a month ahead of build. They could have held off and released that build, but we had a, an independent Visual Studio 2019 release event on April 2nd. And hundreds of thousands of people watched that event. And it was tremendous. I haven't been murdered or robbed. The dog is doing a great job of defending the house. You're right, Carrie. The dog is doing a fantastic job defending the house. You know why the dog does that? You know why the dog barks like that? Because... 60% of the time, it works every time. It does. 60% of the time. Um, so we're going to see this run up here in just a second. Um, but this is an interesting way to do a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of promotion to encourage folks to click follow, to, to cheer, something like that. And... Uh, yeah encourage folks to continue the good vibes and that follower train's going to run up is there anybody who can click the follow button and extend the train 30 seconds history teacher um hashin shin asks what kind of work do i do if i feel really groggy or hungover there we go day-to-day -day life that should extend the date the train we're gonna miss it so the follower the follower notification only picks up, right, once every 30, 10 or 30 seconds. So we've got a problem here where it's not, we, we just found a logical bug there. Well, okay, it extended the train. Hmm. I think we, you know what, day-to-day -day life, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. <laughs> B. Wayne, thank you for the sub. I appreciate that with your Twitch Prime. We'll make a donation to um, um, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So here's what I'm looking at. 
I think we need to turn we need to turn up the granularity of our follower detection so that we can detect that right because we you saw the follow happened and it didn't it didn't update the train immediately so does the follow counter pick up each 30 seconds but only populates the count after that time has rolled over see you know what hat and sandals i think we need to take a look at that right midnight tangent it well it either should have reset the train or it should have um it should have either reset the train or picked up immediately and and restarted the count thank you so much b wayne i appreciate the very kind words and perhaps dare i say oh hugo no 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 don't do that to me writing tests are you kidding you can do it i will i will do it it'll be amazing all right so let's do this let's get in here let's we've seen this thing working we can do a little bit of user interface with this um, and if there's anybody in the chat room that's a designer that wants to take a take some time and and build something nice for that, um, I, what I'd like to do to start is I'd love to just have like a line going across here and something that crosses the line from one side to the other. Our friend Harris Heller has a has a train that functions like that, so you can kind of see it going across the bottom of the screen. That's not bad. I'd like to be able to make various trains like animated objects. That, that as the train is extended, we add cars to the train, or maybe it's boats or planes or whatever it is that that you um, you enjoy. Maybe it's maybe like the old game Centipede. Maybe we add little centipedes to it, right? So, uh, JS Hawk, good morning. Good to see you. Um, a train of hats, S and B. Uh, sure, a, a literally a hat rack that grows. Uh, sure, why not? right make it something fun something simple so but i think we're right we need to take a look at how that followers how those followers are being j shock fantastic thank you j shock i'll be i'll remember that going forward you that was a terrible just disgusting movie history teacher hashin um no offense to the folks that enjoyed that movie but ugh, ugh. Mm, not going there the human centipede movie no no so we have a follower service actor we're using the actor model to configure and run this this collection of um of uh, uh you know what are they called the collection of bots that we're managing here so we're tracking channels here thank you for the follow um the habos 007 um, it, it's a masterpiece. Yeah, J Shock thought I should prep as. Oh, you're prepping for patch and switch. Oh my gosh, patch and switch. Um, it, uh, Rick Claus, Joey Snow. Rick's a Rick's a friend. We're working together on stuff for Ignite. Um, always great to to work with him. Joey, I've I need to spend a little bit more time with. A really great guy. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to hang out with those those fellows when I see them in Redmond or wherever our event would be. But History Teacher asks, what would happen if someone unfollowed and then followed? Good question. I actually keep track of some of the recent followers. Um, <laughs> here we go. Um, there was somewhere I was keeping track of them so that I could catch if somebody did, right? Filtered followers, e-new followers, yeah, here we go. Right. Um, convert user ID to name. This user. Um, I thought I was... Well, it looks like I don't have a filter in here to kind of cache if somebody does a quick follow, unfollow, follow, unfollow, follow, unfollow. You keep using the horse. I do. I don't think it means what you think it means. No, I do, Inigo Montoya. It means they're clicking that follow and follow button. Follow and follow, follow and follow, follow and follow. Okay? You can do it! I can. So we could detect them and kind of filter out and make sure that somebody who does follow and follow within a certain number of minutes, they don't get credit for extending the train. We could do that. Um, or as a new follower. But the follow service should handle some of this. So... There's a thing up here where it's set up. Here we go. 
new Twitch Lib API services follower service. Now the follower service has a check interval in seconds. It should be checking every five seconds for new followers. I don't think it's picking up the followers as fast as it thinks it is. You know? Hmm. Hmm. Is there a, f so we have an event handler here. That's what this plus equals is. This is saying when new followers are detected on Twitch, run this method over here. And that's when we actually go and notify all the things that there was follow and unfollow. It should be built into the Twitch API. It, it is probably B Wayne. <clears throat> it, it should be there, but yeah, it, it might be a consumer responsibility. You're not wrong. I kind of agree with you. All right, let's do this. Is What other methods do we have here on the follower service? I don't like that you're typing all of my things there, screencaster. Um, on service started, service stopped. On service tick, what does on service tick do? Thank you for the very helpful text there, Twitch lip. Um, part of me feels like we should take a, we should take a, um, a stream and go through and add some helpful text to some of these things on Twitch Lib. Could I also show the name, not just the count, the name of the most recent follower? Gordon Howe, that's a good idea too. Sure. Um... I think I'm going to... Let me see what happens on service tech. Right? Is it... Can I get a... Can I get a... Generate a thing here? Womp womp. Nope. Not going to give me a method. All right. Fine. Uh, follower service... That's kind of annoying the screencast thing now on service tick and I don't know what that's supposed to look like is it gonna let me yeah generate method fantastic look at that it's right there it's wonderful now I gotta scroll up so I'm not in front of the thing there's Gordy Howe again Gordy Howe Gordy Howe Fantastic. Hey, Tim Von Monero. Good to see you. Another one of our live coder friends. Um, okay. So what do I have inside there? I don't have anything on the arguments. Okay. I should have... Don't I have a logger here? No. I thought I had a logger in this class. Isn't there a logger? Give me a logger. Yingling logger. No, different logger. Um, there's chat logger. Hmm. Very interesting. I want to log that a thing happened. Hmm. Let's do this. We'll put it on the, this chat log. Right? Log level information for... Uh, I don't have a channel. Um, so I'll make it empty. Uh, we'll call this global. And uh, let's say follower service tech. Because I don't know what it's actually doing. Right? I want to I wanna see that it's actually doing a thing there. Uh, you can sub to one channel a month with Twitch Prime. Yes. Oh, when I say Goran Hal, you hear Gordy Hal. Nice. How do you get control over a Twitch Prime username? Uh, contact Twitch. Thank you for the follow, Eddie Beyond. Oh my gosh, we are less than... We are at 37 followers to our next giveaway. Oh my gosh. I need to put a 100 follower counter down here so we can see that maybe I'll put it top middle right put it somewhere up in here and let me you go away 
Shoot. I'm trying to unpin that thing and it's not going away. Thank you for the follow, Gunny. Appreciate you joining us. Um, all right, let's rebuild and see what happens here. So it's still running there. Rerun. And I'll have to reconnect to the channel as well. So that's okay. Okay, come on. We are waiting. Thank you. So, come on. There we go. All right, so we need to join the channel. Thank you for the follow, Super Epic Ben. It jumped in just before I could trigger the follower train here. So let me go over here. Yep, still has my follower train. It is enabled. So I'm going to open this in a new browser. Okay, so the follower train hasn't started yet. Let me go over here. And I want to be able to see, there we go, follower service tick. that one. Where's my other browser? I had another window. This one. So how do I get to the other window when I'm running in Linux? Okay, so I can see the follower service ticks. Hmm. What do I do if I'm groggy, hungover at work, and can't think? Go for a walk. easy. Get up from your desk. Go for a walk. G, G fuel, coffee, soda, those types of chemical dependencies. Um, they only go so far, but get up, go for a walk. And if you're really groggy, if you're hungover, take the day off. Come back the next day. You're no good to anybody being, being half, half engaged. Okay, so I am seeing that it is ticking every five seconds or so. Yeah, agreed, Turkish developer. They, you know what? Very good point, Turkish developer. If you're sick, take some time, step away, because you're not gonna you're not gonna be in the right mindset when you're working. Uh, that's that, that can't be stated enough. That too many of us try and push ourselves a little bit too hard. So, and don't cough all over my mouse. Oh, dear Lord, no. Don't do that. Don't cough all over it. Admiral Kier, you're a Tur Turkish developer too. Terrific! Uh, many jobs have some sort of menial tasks, which you've been putting away for a long time. E yeah, sure. Right? There's always those kinds of things. Yes, if you're mentally functional, work from home. I work from home, though, all the time. So there's this weird... There's this weird sense of, am I doing enough? Right? You feel this guilt as a remote worker. Oh my gosh, I didn't work enough. I wasn't actually in the, in the game and, and focused on stuff for a long time. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get the rest of your team sick or anything like that. So Yeah, don't wait 30 minutes at the coffee maker. Remote workings you can do remote working means Blazer Mr. Magoo can do more not less. Yeah. Good point. That's your mind messing with you if you're sick. Please do not come into work. Robert Table, so good to see you, my friend. I love it when a plan comes together. I do. And there's Robert Table. So, thank you for the shout out there, Hugo. Uh, you play a ranked game, lose it, and get upset, and play ten more. Yeah. So, chat room. I mentioned in the Discord. If you if you saw in the general channel on the Discord, um, I've been, I've been. Uh, Asked to take a look at um, Riot Games 
developer APIs and things. And I need to... Uh, I've never played League of Legends. So before I can even start taking a look at it, I need to learn how to play League of Legends. Literally, it's research for work. Exclamation point help, Turkish developer, will get you the list of commands. Um, someone said containers, 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 and boom, here comes Robert Tables. Kubernetes, 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 and Jessica Dean appears. No, no, that doesn't work like that. Gordy Howe with the smile. See, I, I actually said at that time, Gary. I need to at least get some context about the game. Right. Find a follower in League of Legends who plays League and duo with them. I don't need to go quite that far. I was actually thinking about asking our good friend Ash Caravan to, to show me the salt that is League of Legends. There's a follower. Thank you for the follow. So Stream Elements picked it up. The follower service tick happened, and it didn't detect the new follower. Do you see that? Yep, Ninja Ola, League of Legends. So thank you for the follow, Fat Daddy 0606. There we go. So, okay, hang on. One, two, three, four, and then it picked up the follower. So that's what, 20 seconds, 25 seconds? That it that it took to pick up the follower. Mozambican Dev, Darth and PC Soul. Very cool. Well, welcome. It's great to, to have you all the way from, right, um, Mozambique? Do I have that right? Thank you for the follow. X <laughs> I appreciate the follow. I'm not going to pronounce that one. Um, you can do .NET and Linux. Yes, you love .NET, but do it only in Windows. Can you do it the same way you as you would in Windows? That's Yes, you can. Um, and I'm actually, this is the same code that I had in Windows over here in uh, in Linux. Mozambique. Oh my gosh. Tremendous. Thank you so much. Yes, XTC. It's not ecstasy. Yes, XTC. I got to make sure I say that right. So, uh, there is League of Legends World Championships. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. So, there's a time delay between polling and the display output for the follow counts. Yes. And it looks like it's about 30 seconds that I'm seeing there. So, there's something... And, and thank you to our new followers for, for for joining us and also for helping test our little follower widget that we're, that we're building right here. That's going to... It's a follower train. So, we need to... International man of pronunciation. Well, yes, Hugo. Yes, I, I pride myself on that. I'm kind of like Alex Trebek in that I can pronounce things. A bit, okay? Because if I couldn't pronounce things, it would be... It's illegal in nine countries. I, it would be illegal in nine countries. My, my voice would be terrible. So a 30-second delay might be waiting to see if the followers are staying, followed. I don't know, Hat and Sandals. That's a very good question. Let me... Let's do this. Let's go over to... Let's go back over to the source code. So, th this is that tick that's happening, right? It's happening every time the the service, right, is checking. Um, notify the appropriate channel actor for the channel with the new follower. Okay. So, it's, it's checking for new followers here. So... Let's do this. Let's just copy this and just right away in global say, well, yeah. Just say new follower detected. Just to make sure that it's not something else further down, right? And that we're hitting that immediately. Um, 33 followers and we'll give away a sticker pack. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, let's, you, right here, let's restart this. Um, <laughs> fantastic. It's wonderful. Let's see what's going on here. I'm Scott, I'm new here. <laughs> Quoting, Mark. Thank you so much for that sub. Appreciate you joining us. Great Scott. There he was again. Still starting here. And uh, bringing your Twitch Prime here. And we'll make another donation to... Uh, 
see this is good this happens to me the first week or so of any any of our new donors to saint jude thank you so much all right let me join this channel there it is and the widget should be running can i is it control shift tab no how do i get into the other one that's running over here okay so there's the train look at that new follower detected but it didn't actually do anything there right so there's that filter to make sure well is this somebody really new because the first time it always returns and it's like oh everybody's new so it kind of skips that um xtc asks do you use any gui ides i do i typically use visual studio 2019 um, you'll find me using that when I'm working in Windows. I really enjoy using that version of Visual Studio. Um, but because we're here on Linux, I'm actually using Visual Studio Code, which some folks feel is a little bit becoming more and more, um, it's becoming more and more, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? More and more IDE feeling, right? All right. I think... I think I have it's more robust yes good word Robert tables more full featured more mainstream um yeah all right so let's do this I can if I remember correctly I should be able to force a test here because I wrote a I wrote a test controller here so I could force a follower to appear there we go Pass in the follower name as a string. All right. So let's do this. Um, right, because I don't have anybody appearing here. Can I just tear this off and put it over here? Let's do this. Um, so look, that's not how you spell localhost. Localhost 5001 API test. And I'm going to say uh, follower name equals foo magoo i just made that up can you believe it no uh let's see what happens connection was reset womp womp all right try it again well, that didn't do anything do i have to do that no right Hmm. API slash test. API slash test. Okay. And I did a get. Hmm. Try again. No. What's happening over there? Network. Reload. Trying to do the get. And it's it's going nowhere. Follower name equals Fumago. Hmm. And it just kind of hangs. It's not actually... So what's happening over here? Well, that's... It's not doing anything. I don't see it receiving that request at all. No, the API is running. Peaches for bits. Thank you. Quick, quick. Get the other things so we can see thank you for following peaches for bits there okay nick craver https maybe good to see you nick so it still hasn't picked up the new file who was the new follow yeah peaches for bits um it might be an https issue yeah you know what i think you're right but this didn't pick up Are we not are we not connected over here? There it is. Holy crow. Holy crow. Okay, that took a really long time to detect. That's not going to be reliable for doing this well. There we go. So I hit I hit the endpoint directly. Okay, so my test API right pushed through and it updated the 
the train length directly. So, yeah, you're right with the HTTPS. Good call, my friends. Good call, chat room. Points to all of our friends out there. And uh, it works. All right. So, let me think. All right, so if we give it another name, Fumagoo. Um, just, all right, so just Fubar. So watching the train length down here, the, the test, right? To, let's make sure we understand what's going on here correctly, right? So this test method is going into the hub context, clients all, and saying, there's a new follower, which is what this does. Oh, wait a sec. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Hmm. This is telling follow hub context, which is only for the user activity hub. If I go back over, let's make sure I'm doing this right. This hub context is, oh, it's the same user activity hub. But I'm telling all clients. I'm not telling. Okay, so it's not a specific group or not for the specific channel. And I'm telling it new follower, this user display name. So it, it looks like, right? Some of this that's going on up here is taking a little bit longer. And I'm willing to bet this is taking a long time. I'm willing to bet that's what it is. You know? Fumagoo 2. That's a hey, that's not a bad idea. Um because right the when, you, when I show you the train, right? Because the train is down here in standard features. Screen widgets, user activity train. So this component is actually being loaded up on the fly. Cypher! Cypher tier! Thank you for the raid! Oh my goodness. I really appreciate you sending, sharing your friends, sending them over here. Um, Greetings, my excellent friend. Greetings indeed. Cypher, it was so good to meet you at TwitchCon. Thank you so much for, for sharing and said, don't, it, a raid is a raid. I really appreciate that. Um, raiders, welcome, so, welcome into the channel. My name is Jeff Fritz. I, I write code. I teach folks how to, how to write software here on channel. And we're writing, we're building a user activity train that was inspired by our friend Imperial. That's going to show, particularly we're writing it right now to show when there's new followers. Um, we're going to have a little train and right now it's just numbers on screen but we'll animate this as we get it working properly but you can see here we're checking for new followers and when we get new followers as long as they come within a certain number of as they join us within a certain amount of time we'll extend our train so we're writing a little bit of code here to to create this train of followers and encourage folks to join us so, hey, Cypher, what were you working on over there on your channel? Can you let us know so that some of our friends that are here in my channel, if they're interested, can follow you and join you next time? Time to bust out system diagnostics, says B. Wayne. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Mr. Buggy says, the only thing more meta than this stream would be Twitch developers streaming themselves working on Twitch. Um, maybe. You did some Division 2. Ooh. A configurable amount of time. Well, it's a configurable amount of time, amount of time here, right, uh, right there, where you see the stream, the the stream train, counting up or uh, counting down, right. So that I'm okay with. Um, gosh. So the problem that we're seeing here, Cipher, and, and right, the this will kind of make sense when I explain it is stream elements is detecting the new follower and my my follower service that's checking up top there isn't raising that there was a new follower it isn't specifying that a new follower has happened at the same time it's taking like 30 seconds to a minute later which kind of makes this number here a little wonky you know thank you for the follow belgian tiger there we go. So stream elements detected that five seconds went by. Each one of these is five seconds. Each one of these follower service ticks that you see here before this number goes up. And we'll see it indicate that it found it 
15 seconds have gone by now. 20 seconds have gone by. What's it doing? What's she doing there? What's it doing? 30 seconds have gone by now. 35 seconds. And it still isn't raising that there's a new follower, right? 40 seconds. There is no meatloaf command. That's, that's for, is my mother here? 45 seconds. We're going to get out to almost a minute here before it picks this up. This is a problem. This is a big problem. Bang! Now it detected it. So that's inside the follower service. As a debug suggestion, I recommend an adding many in a series, either it's delayed by some amount of time or it's on an interval. So, Nick, you're, I, I think you're onto something. I do. Um, looking at the code over here, the follower service that I'm using from the Twitch Lib API, I'm requesting access. I'm telling it to check every five seconds. And when those new followers are detected, that's when it's raising this up, this event. So what I'm what I'm seeing what I'm seeing is that the API that I'm depending on here while it's checking every 5 seconds it isn't actually detecting at the same rate so the question then is is the endpoint that the twitch lib is hitting are they caching output for 60 seconds right which then begs the question also, how is stream elements getting the notification immediately? Now the notification, we, oh my gosh, we have both Nicks here? Both Nick Craver and Nick Larson? It's a double Nick stream. Wow. So there's also, there's also an API that we might be able to use right let's t let's go over to the to the twitch docs there's an there is an api we might be able to use with a little pub sub that will give us notification right so there's a pub sub notification that we can do right there are api limits you can clients can listen on many topic at once can add new topics but there is a limit Clients can listen on up to 50 topics per connection. Yeah. So I believe there's one that we can listen to for... Well, maybe there isn't. For channel subscriptions. Yeah. I thought there was... Um, oh, there's a webhook. That's what I'm thinking. In the new Twitch API... Right? And and uh, lucky number 11, Andy's going to go, of course there is! Did you know this? A user has a new follower. Here we go. So we can set up a webhook to be notified when a new follower event occurs. You following me there? So, yeah, Hugo, yes! Who knows, need an Azure library to auto-reverse engineer API design. That's not bad either, right? Then you say they send you a JSON payload and BAM! Says K the Blade Runner. Good to see you, K. Um, I think you're onto something. I think you're onto something. Can we set up an Azure webhook to, to be our endpoint that this webhook will send notifications to, right? Um, right, it mimics the get user follows endpoint. Developers, developers, Thank you for the, for the follow, Boss Geekery. Right, so we'll get a payload of who it is and we'll actually get their names too so we won't have to do a second hit to the API to see who the person is. So maybe, follow me on this on this chat room. Oh, thank you for the lurk, uh, Cypher. Um, so if we set up an Azure function 
to be our endpoint that receives these, the question is going to be, how many webhooks can we set up to listen to? So that we can get that, right? And the challenge that we're trying to solve here is, oh, Nick, I was going to go there. But the challenge that we're trying to solve here is, can we, can we listen to multiple, multiple channels at a single Azure Functions endpoint, filter it, and send a WebSocket notification into, in, into our bot that will then process and, and behave appropriately. Yeah, Nick, so you can use ngrok. ngrok is a utility that will allow you to set up a static endpoint on the public web and route it, route the information about it to your local machine. And does does ngrok, ngrok, does ngrok support Linux development. I know. You go. Words are hard. NG Rock. Is it NG Rock or is it? I think it was NG Rock. Yes, it does. Fantastic. Then we might have to do that. Let's do this. I think. I think this is going to be where we're going to end up going next time. But I want to see. Right? Is there? Is there an API limit on the webhooks? You're going to subscribe to and, and unsubscribe. So there's a verify. Oh, I've written this before. I've written some of this code before. Um, all subscriptions have an expiration time which cannot exceed 10 days. Fine. To renew a subscription, make a subscription request with the same parameters as the original request. Okay. Each client ID can have at most 10,000 subscriptions. Well, there you go. You can subscribe to the same topic at most three times. To increase either of these limits, fill out the form. Okay. So, um, our friends that are that are considering using this bot to start are... Um, I know these people. Uh, cool Tony, Dryad T, Imperial, and uh, Fairy Wings. Notice I didn't say Fierce Kittens. She's got her own bot. It looks like Twitch has WebSocket pub sub also. That would be simpler. Uh, really? Well, when this is published out to the web, I wouldn't need that Azure Functions endpoint to run through it, would I? Where do you see WebSocket? Um, right, verifying payloads, getting notifications. Twitch sends you a post request with the notification data. If you do not get the notification, Twitch retries with an exponential back off. Okay. There's a unique ID included with each. Pub sub on the left. Yes, th so the pub sub over here, right, this doesn't, the, the topics that are available here do not include um, the follower. I can get on bits, which will need that, and subs, which we'll need for the other pieces of this follower train, this user activity train. So we will need that eventually, but for the followers, we can do just the webhook and set up a webhook and go through ngrok and essentially, I think... Right. So to be clear, friends, we've wrapped up this right, this follower service that right, we've abstracted away the interactions with the follower service that Twitch Lib had um, inside this follower service actor. So as long as we do the same things, right, when a new follower is detected and we, we notify all of our signal R clients appropriately, um, we should be okay to swap this out so that it's using the webhook instead. And if we and if we do build and test with ngrok locally here, we should be okay, especially when we promote and push out to a production space, probably on Azure. That'll be able to listen and subscribe directly from that app service we deploy to. Thank you so much for the follow, Dorf Vader. Appreciate that. The pub sub does? I Really? I didn't I didn't think I saw it in there. Stop it. Uh this one. 
PubSub, right? I looked at the topics here, right? Bits, 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 badge, channel subscriptions, commerce, when folks make a purchase, and whispers. No. No. The pub sub it doesn't look like. So there's sub gifts. Right? Yeah, that's the only one that I have there. But it is the example at the bottom. Let me see. Let's see what we got here. That's a whisper event. Commerce event. No. An anonymous sub gift. Sub gift. Yeah. Um, now we're looking for the follows, not not the subs. So the the follows are down here in in the webhook. There we go. And that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, it is weird that they split that. You're right. Um, and it would be nice if it was available over there. What? 0, 0.0? Are you kidding? Sentiment can't be that bad. Thank you for the follow. Um, is that good, Kawa? Thanks so much for joining us. Can, can, can we get some tacos in the chat room? Thank you. Everybody needs a little bit of tacos. Let's make that sentiment just a little bit happier. Right? Thank you. This is a taco emergency. Red alert. Everybody get your tacos. Throw me a freaking bone here. We need to improve sentiment. We want happy chatters. All right. So I think I know where we're going next time. Um, we'll set up and we will, we will appropriately start... Um, working with, let's work with the webhook next time and get that running so that we can do um, a, a more, a tighter notification of when we receive new followers here. Because it, clearly it's just, it's not quite there. And, um, right? Yeah, the zero zero does feel, feel like it's like a blip, like something happened there and it went offline. Greatest Lord asks, what do I think about JavaScript and AWS? Um, well, that you know what, Doc D twenty seven, we got to figure that out. The only way we're gonna know if the webhook is kind of slow is if we actually test it and we get start start using it. So we will take a look compared to the IRC. Well, does the IRC show a follow? Does it? I can see the join when you join the channel, right? Um, good Kawa. Let's see if we can find. So here's the bot running, right? My current follow, my current bot. Um, there's stream elements announcing the follow. And I don't, I don't see the follow appearing here in IRC. That's not saying that it won't be announced in IRC. Maybe, there are other things that we can request. The front end displayed by server updates in real time-ish. So no, yeah, you're right. Um, we should be able to get it in similar time. So there's joining and parting. Um, I don't want to clear chat. There's a guide to the various commands that you can request, the various features you can request from Twitch chat. Let me see if there's something here. Um, commands, message, yeah, yeah, yeah. IRC commands, of course, IRC commands. But before we join, there's a series of, re of scopes, IRC capabilities. Here we are. Membership state event data. By default, they do not send this. I think I'm getting this data. Right? I think that's some of the things. 
Uh, Twitch specific commands. Yes, I am getting that. Uh, allow sending receiving. This is one that I am receiving. I'm not sure if I'm getting Twitch membership though. Let me go over to my current, the bot that I'm running here called the Fritz bot. And that's over here. And we'll clean up our code here in just a minute and take a look. Um, I think I put it in chatbot. Do, 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 do. Is it here? Um, ba, 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 where is it? Where is it? Okay. I'm looking for that join command. Commands too fast. Commands too fast. After execute. Hmm. It's interesting to see all this in their API. Wager what's following is a completely separate mechanism. Yeah, could be. I didn't see the join command here. Hmm. I'm gonna have to dig into this a little bit further. No. Oh wait, so the bot is actually responding to the Twitch API that I built. Which is here. Yeah, chat client. Yeah, there it is. So, oh, I'm, yeah, I am requesting membership. So it isn't showing me when there's a follow in the chat room. Two cents are that webhooks seem to be the first to get delayed when Twitch is under high load, whereas IRC is always real time. So, Doc, um, I hear what you're saying, but I don't see the follow up, uh, be delivered as a notification in chat right stream elements this right here they're receiving that notification somewhere and i'm not sure thank you for the follow how can you sign up for dotnet passport what do you mean dot what's dotnet passport what do you mean help me out there um yeah right so we just got that follow Uh, we should suggest adding follower to the web sockets. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah, but we need to we need to figure out if the web hooks are slow and detect and go off of that. I think. So, um, here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna wrap up here and. Yep, yep, yep. Um, we're gonna wrap up so we can get folks over to another stream. And you, you know what? I've it's Friday. I like to raid creative folks on Fridays. Um, oh my goodness, there's some really cool things going on here today. Um, but I think, I think yeah, let's set up the raid. Let me check in my code here. Right, let's clean up what we've got right now. And um, get ready. And I, I think I think we're definitely looking at the webhooks as a solution here. Um, so let me do a quick check. Yep. So I am going to commit all of these. Um, detecting follower uh, notification speed. Right? And I'll push those changes up. Very cool. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Why don't you use the Stream Elements API? That has WebSockets, and the train stays in sync with the alerts. We could do that. We could definitely hook up to Stream Elements or Stream Labs. But I'm not sure I want to be dependent on them for an interaction. It adds a layer of abstraction and, a, and possibly another, another layer that could fail in our stack. We can take a look at it, but... 
I want to see if there's a way that we can get it faster using the webhooks directly from Twitch. If not, we'll certainly consider stream elements. All right. Thank you so much, all of our friends out there that, that tuned in today. All of our new followers, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's really great to see you. I will be back on Sunday, but I want to set up for a raid. And I like to raid, I like to raid creative folks. Thank you for issuing the raid command there. And I'm, I'm going to raid, thank you for the follow. Oh my goodness. I'm going to raid our, our variety streamer friend who's, um, who's just started, just started streaming here. And she's a great friend and she's the inspiration for this follower train. We're going to raid Imperial. And we'll raid some other creative folks next Friday. But every Friday, I want to make sure I raid some creative folks. Support them and get them up and running. Um, some really great stuff that are going on on those other channels. Yeah, hat and sandals. Absolutely. So, followers, uh, subscribers, copy out that first line from the chatbot. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Copy out that second line from the chatbot, and let's get ready to raid Imperial. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I'll be back, like I said, Sunday. This video, just like all my other videos, will be available over on the YouTube channel a little bit later. Maybe over the weekend we'll get that loaded. All right? Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. Get ready to say hi to Imperial. Take care. <laughs>